there are a few reasons you might want to run an MP5. Compact size and lightweight body is a big one, but slim, easy to grab magazines that store in even pistol mag pouches is another big benefit. And of course, there's no shortage of movies and real world events that prominently feature the little machine in pistol films, so you might be somewhat of a fan. This MP5 by Classic Army, the CA5A4, now comes with an M-Lock rail which makes adding modern accessories a bit easier and comes with a full stock which, at least for airsoft, is definitely nice for added battery space. With a solid metal build and 11.1 LiPo capable out of the box with a basic MOSFET unit offers a lot of value for the little submachine gun that could. Let's take a closer look. Comes in a relatively unmarked box, though with a giant trigger graphic on the front, so it isn't the most incognito. You get this black Classic Army branded bag, which I can only assume is a gun case of sorts, perhaps a dust bag if anything, but don't rely on it as a gun case. The box flipped inside out works a lot better. Standard printed manual, I like that the diagram is actually specific to this M-Lock model and not just a generic maybe M4 as we've seen before. Also nice to see a full exploded parts diagram should you need it. Protection is solid foam cut out into the shape of the gun which we've always been a fan of and should be more than enough to protect your gun. The included MP5 magazine is constructed of metal and is a high cap type magazine. It's made well with a nice clicky winding wheel at the bottom and pivoting fill door at the top. 9x19 markings is always a nice touch. Pulling out the gun itself, I gotta say I'm a big fan of the look. It's only a slightly modernized classic look, but I think less can be more and I like how the rail really integrates well with the look. Overall finish is really nice with a uniform black finish throughout. It's not a big gun by any means and with a full stock feels like a really balanced package. The M-Lock rail is metal with a nice semi-matte texture. M-Lock slots throughout even on those 45 degree faces which is always nice for a little bit more options. Though at the bottom you get three and a half slots which hopefully doesn't cause any mounting issues. Overall comfort of the rail is really nice and the size feels pretty perfect in the hands though with the smooth faces there isn't a lot of grip to speak of. Dummy charging handle works well with a good sound and functions to reveal the hop up unit. The handle itself is metal though it's not steel and I'd avoid being too aggressive with the HK slaps, tempting as it may be. Hop up is a sliding type which works just fine but personally I much prefer a rotary style hop up as fine adjustments are a bit easier. At least it offers a reference point for returning to a certain setting for a certain weight BB. Flash hider is a standard MP5 triprong made of metal. Under the thread protector is a 14mm clockwise thread so you may require an adapter. Certain batches like our current batch will be clockwise and we have specifically requested counterclockwise threads for the future. Iron sights are classic MP5 with a metal sight block up front with non-adjustable post. Rear sight has windage adjustment and four different peepholes to pick from. Nice and clicky action which is always welcome. The receiver itself is nicely finished with a metal upper and polymer lower just like the real thing. I like the little details like the simulated welding spots for a little bit more realism. This gun has the navy style lower with ambidextrous selector instead of the SEF lower with a slightly different look and single sided selector. Selector itself has a pretty nice clicky action notching into safe, semi and full auto. It's a shame there's no burst setting for a bit more MP5 goodness. Magazine insert is pretty tight out of the box and ours required a bit of break in to insert nicely, though once it's in it holds really tight with a very acceptable amount of play. Standard MP5 ambidextrous paddle release which works well but because you have to yank out the mag it isn't going to be quite as fast as drop free magazines. The full stock is polymer and nice and solid while being really lightweight. Comes with a standard MP5 sling mount. I like how comfortable the cheek rest is and it's much more comfortable than a sliding or even a folding stock. 
Pushing down on the plastic butt plate, you'll find the battery connector and basic MOSFET unit. I really like that this gun comes with the better Deans connectors out of the box, but includes an adapter if you already have batteries with the Mia plug. Battery space is truly amazing with more than enough room for a 9.6 nickel battery and if you run an 11.1 LiPo, you could easily fit one with massive capacity. That extra room is also super nice to tuck in any extra wiring. The butt pad is reversible to either direction, so as long as you line up the notches, it'll click into place. Looking at the trigger, it's very standard V2 AEG with a long, albeit smooth, take up. Brake is at the end of travel, but there isn't much over travel after. Reset is all the way at the start of travel, but at least it's really defined with a nice clicky action. So one of our staff members dressed this one up to show you what's possible in terms of accessories. It's a pretty straightforward build that adds minimal extra weight. Bifrost tracer up front mounted with a clockwise to counterclockwise adapter. Still one of our top picks for a compact tracer unit. Slim angled foregrip up front for a bit more to grab onto and these M-lock rail panels which I'm actually a pretty big fan of. Kind of a fish scale design, it's nice because it offers directional grip so you can set it to your preference. It's also very low profile so it doesn't change the overall feel of the rail much at all but really does add a nice texture to the otherwise smooth rail. MP5s out of the box don't have a Picatinny rail up top, but luckily many top rail adapters are available on the market. This one clamps on with four screws, offering just enough rail to mount this acro red dot on top. Simple and clean unit with just enough rise to be perfect on this MP5. Again, nothing crazy, but an example of what's possible with minimal work on an MP5. This setup makes the smaller form factor of the MP5 shine for CQB. Onto the shooting range now, it's always a good day when you bring an MP5 onto the range. Fake bolt manipulation is kind of required, don't you think? Performance is excellent out of the box with very respectable consistency, but the stock iron sights do sit a bit low and the standard AEG trigger feels eh, maybe a bit lackluster, though certainly still usable. Chrono readings are very impressive with the amount of deviation that you typically expect to find for a higher end gun. Air seal components seem really well put together. 13.7 rounds per second on an 11.1 is perfectly reasonable for a stock AEG, which equates to 822 rounds per minute, which is actually faster than the real MP5 at 700. So let's talk final thoughts on the Classic Army CA5 A4 M Lock. I think it would make a good contender for a first AEG if you're seeking something a bit different than another M4, but don't want to go crazy with something too niche. Magazine and parts are readily available should you need them, and it comes in at a pretty competitive price in its mid-tier category. Of course, if you already have that standard M4, and like me, always had a thing for the little MP5, I think this gun is definitely worth checking out. As always, thanks so much for watching, subscribe to the channel for more content, and I'll catch you on the next one.